I'm sure you've heard about what's going on in the US right now. And as someone who truly believes in the power of equality and diversity in tech, I can't stay silent. Racism is horrible and has no place in technology or anywhere else for that matter. If you'd like to learn more about what you can do and how you can become proactively anti-racist, I will leave some links, some really useful resources in the description. And if you have any other resources that you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments. In this video, I want to talk about how technology discriminates against people of color and what we can do about it. It is all of our responsibility to ensure that tech solutions are inclusive and that they're solving problems for people instead of creating more of them. If you strongly disagree with that statement, please do me a favor and unsubscribe from all of my social media. However, if you're here to learn and are ready to make this world a more inclusive place, then let's do this. Let's look at some examples of how modern day technology promotes systemic racism, starting with a big one, which is big data and algorithms are subjective. We tend to blindly trust data and algorithms thinking that they should be subjective. After all, they're mathematical functions. How can they be subjective? They should treat everyone equally, right? Kathy O'Neill in her book, Weapons of Math Destruction, demonstrates how that is not true. She argues that governments and organizations use algorithms to make important decisions like who is getting a loan, who is going to get a job, what is your insurance rate going to be like, and how long a person goes to prison for, for example. These algorithms are flawed and create a negative feedback loop. For example, black communities in the US historically lacked access to good education, Therefore, they had less career opportunities and therefore they formed a smaller proportion of a workforce that performed well at different organizations, statistically speaking, because the candidate pool was smaller to begin with, right? Let's say that a company wants to use an algorithm to determine what type of employees perform the best so that they can adjust their hiring practices in the future. Well, the algorithm might not necessarily take into consideration that there was a candidate pool problem to begin with and therefore might discriminate against black candidates in the future. This is a very general and a non-specific example and I will create a separate video diving deeper into the topic in the future. Another variable that may contribute to biases in algorithms and in our technology is that they're built by people and people are inherently biased. And therefore they may unwillingly transfer those biases onto what they're building. And this is a huge argument for bias training and for diversity in tech. Example number two of racism in technology is artificial intelligence and facial recognition in particular. I'm sure you've heard that artificial intelligence has issues recognizing the faces of certain demographics. According to the New York Times, the National Institute of Standards and Technology has found that AI systems have falsely recognized African American and Asian faces 10 to 100 times more than Caucasian faces. And the highest error rate when it comes to facial recognition was when identifying Native Americans. And this study was published in 2019, at the end of 2019, which is not that long ago. Facial recognition systems are also known to be sexist and ageist, recognizing female faces and the faces of older people at a much lower rate. And while facial recognition has pretty scary implications for surveillance technology, it also is a technology that we are using every day. For example, Face ID that Apple has or Face Unlock with Android. And what about future technologies like self-driving cars? According to an article by Guardian in 2019, facial recognition technology or object recognition technology that has been used in driverless cars or self-driving cars was 10% more likely to recognize a white person as a pedestrian as opposed to a black person. Scary. This should not be this way and in fact we can't let this happen. Example number three is content echo chambers. As you know, social media companies and other content companies 
use machine learning technology to learn what you like, what you, what kind of content you interact with, what kind of content you uh, enjoy, etc. So that they can serve you more, so that they can keep you on their platform or whatever for longer. And a lot of the times it's the kind of content that we agree with which basically means that we're only fed content that we agree with, which creates echo chambers. So unless we're proactive about it, we're not going to hear the points of view of other people, the experiences of people who are different from us. That stops us thinking outside of the box or being empathetic towards people who are different than us. As a result, not only we think less, and questions ourselves and our actions and our beliefs less, but it also creates a wider divide between people who believe different things, experience different things, who have different backgrounds, who have different friend circles, etc. And that is a dangerous place. Example number four is redlining and accessibility according to location. Redlining is a concept that I've just learned about and that horrified me, to be honest, but it's the practice of denying services or products to someone based on where they live. From what I understand, and I have a limited understanding of this, I'm still learning about systemic racism in the US. If you're in the same boat, some resources are below for you to also understand the situation better, or at least a starting point to start understanding what's happening. But from what I understand, redlining started with a housing discrimination, basically not allowing certain minorities to move into certain neighborhoods and therefore kind of creating pockets where these communities of minorities lived. And then it moved on to denying certain services like providing loans or insurance to those minorities based on where they lived because they lived in cer certain places in certain communities, right? Absolutely crazy. Well, certain algorithms that we've already discussed in example number one are still using postcodes as a variable and are still using that historical data to discriminate against people, which is absolutely insane. And that is a form of digital redlining. There's also another type of digital redlining, which is geography based. And a good example of that is internet access. Certain internet providers deem certain neighborhoods unprofitable and therefore they have bad coverage there. Another example is Amazon Prime that doesn't deliver to certain locations and also Pokemon Go. Um, if you remember that game where you had to physically walk around and gain points and all that stuff, train your Pokemon, find your Pokemon, but that game has limited functionalities in certain neighborhoods as well just geographically speaking. An example number five is search results that misinterpret information. I'm currently reading a book called Algorithms of Oppression, How Search Engines Reinforce Racism by Sophia Noble. And it demonstrates how search engines curate information and therefore misrepresent certain people, certain concepts and knowledge in general. For example, when Sophia googled black girls back in 2009, the results on the first page of the search were mostly pornographic. And there were also a lot of search suggestions that promoted racism and stereotypes. One can argue that that's the result of popular searches, but is it right though? Shouldn't there be mechanisms in place that prevent algorithms from reinforcing and promoting racist content and concepts? Can you imagine yourself or your daughter or your sister being a black girl back in 2009, Googling herself or Googling black girls and finding pornographic results? What implications would it have to your or this little girl's self-identity? I'm only starting to scratch the surface of racism in technology. And of course, I don't have all of the answers on how we can solve it. However, I have a few suggestions that could be a good starting point. For example, I think it's very important to start learning about what issues and what biases our current technology and algorithms and data have in them. 
I also think that it's very important to demand transparency in those algorithms, especially the ones that are making very important decisions for other people. Like we've already spoken about getting a loan, getting a job, uh, insurance, all of these things, they need to be transparent and we need to understand if they're biased or not and of course push for their absolute transformation so that they don't take into the account flawed data, flawed historic data that is the result of systemic racism. I also think it's very important to understand our own biases because like I said, humans are inherently biased and it's not our fault. This is just the way our brains work. We create these shortcuts and categorize things in order to survive essentially. That's how I think this started evolutionary speaking. Don't listen to me as a psychologist, especially an evolutionary psychologist, but it's normal to have biases. However, we can do something about them and there are ways to find out your own biases. I will link a free bias test um, in the description and I'm also working on a video that will come out pretty soon about biases and how we can tackle them. Once we understand what our biases are, we can start doing something about them. We can start calling ourselves out and recognizing those biases when we're making decisions. We can also call ourselves out on our inappropriate behavior as well as others because we need to keep everyone accountable and it's important to speak out when something that shouldn't happen is happening. I also think it's vital to make it our own personal responsibility to improve diversity in tech because that's the only way we're going to end up with inclusive solutions, inclusive technology, technology that solves problems for everyone and that includes everyone. That can be done in so many different ways. You can mentor someone, you can donate to different organization, you can share stories. The list goes on and on and on on how you can improve diversity in technology. I will make a separate videos on, with some ideas on that, but right now as a starting point, there will be some resources in the description where you can find some ideas and get inspired on how to do that. Also, I think that we should all hold tech companies accountable when it comes to, first of all, their hiring practices, right? So how diverse is their workforce and also their products and whether they are inclusive and whether they're solving problems of everyone. Finally, I think it's essential to continue our education on the topic, proactively avoiding echo chambers and also educating others. I think that those are some good starting points and if you have any other ideas, please share them in the comments below. It's all of our responsibility to drive tech in the right direction and as a content creator, I believe it's my duty to create content on how we can make this industry more inclusive. So I commit to creating more content on this topic and diving deeper into the issues of racism and technology and how we can solve it. Let's do this. I will leave all the links to my research for this video in the description and also I'll leave some links to resources that I think are great starting points when it comes to your edu education on how to be anti-racist. Let me know in the comments if some of the things that I talked about today were surprising to you and what you think about the issues of racism in technology. Like this video if you've enjoyed it and share it with a friend who works in tech and needs to see this. Subscribe to my channel for more content on this topic and we can also be friends on other social media. You can find me as Coding Blonde. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.